The long bone is supplied by four sets of arteries. These include number one, the nutrient artery, number two, the periosteal arteries, number three, metaphyseal arteries, and number four, the epiphyseal arteries. Let's take a look at the nutrient artery. It enters the middle of the shaft through a nutrient foramen, runs obliquely, and then divides into ascending and descending branches in the medullary cavity. Each branch then subdivides into a number of smaller, parallel vessels which enter the metaphyses and form hairpin loops. These loops anastomose with epiphyseal, metaphyseal, also known as juxtaepiphyseal, and periosteal arteries. Thus, the metaphyses is the most vascular zone of the long bone. The nutrient artery supplies the medullary cavity containing bone marrow and inner two-thirds of the outer shell of compact bone of diaphyses and metaphyseal Before entering the nutrient foramen, the nutrient artery is tortuous, so that it is not affected during the movements. The veins are numerous and cancel as bones. Now coming to the periosteal arteries. They are numerous in number and ramify beneath the periosteum. They enter the bone through Volkmann's canal to supply outer one-third of the cortex. The periosteal vessels are especially numerous beneath the muscular and ligamentous attachments. Now the metaphyseal, also known as the juxtaepiphyseal arteries. They are derived from the neighboring arteries and enter the metaphyses directly along the attachment of the capsule. Epiphyseal arteries. These are derived from the arterial anastomoses around the joint, known as circulus vasculosis. They enter the epiphyses either directly or after piercing the epiphyseal cartilage. Nerve supply of a long bone. Bone tissue is innervated by both myelinated and unmyelinated, or C fibers, sensory neurons. Volkmann's canals are channels that assist with blood and nerve supply from the periosteum to the Haversian canal. A Haversian canal generally contains one or two capillaries and nerve fibers. Small, myelinated, and amyelinated nerve fibers enter the numerous foramina of the epiphyseal and metaphyseal regions of the long bones, traverse the thin cortex, and then supply the interior of the bone. Numerous myelinated and amyelinated nerve fibers traverse the nutrient foramen and supply the bone marrow and endosteum of the shaft of the bone. Small myelinated fibers wind about the trabeculae of the spongiosa or spread out on the undersurface of the articular cartilage. Small knob-like terminations of nerve endings terminate in close relationship to the endosteum. Other myelinated nerve fibers have branched free fiber endings associated with the walls of intertrabecular marrow arterioles. Myelinated nerve fibers are usually associated with vascular walls but may also be associated with the connective tissue of the intertrabecular fat or marrow. While the Volkmann's canals of the shaft receive nerve fibers from the overlying periosteum, the periosteal layer of the bone tissue is highly pain sensitive and an important cause of pain in several disease conditions causing bone pain like fractures, osteoarthritis, etc. However, in certain diseases, the endosteal and haversian nerve supply seems to play an important role, for example, in osteomalacia, osteonecrosis, and other bone diseases. Thus, there are several types of bone pain, each with many potential sources or origins of cause.